In the last video, we discussed the pathophysiology underlying Alzheimer's disease. Now we're going to talk about how we can prevent Alzheimer's disease. And in fact, in the United States, Alzheimer's disease is currently the number two, no, the number three killer behind heart disease and cancer. So this is something that is very common and something that can be prevented for the most part if you subscribe to Dale Bredesen's uh, theory of, of Alzheimer's. And like I said in the last video, he's a neurologist, he's a, he's a researcher, and for decades he tried to find the, the cure to Alzheimer's, and he couldn't. But he, what he did find is 36 things that helped, and if you add them together, they make a pretty big difference. So here's a list of a lot of the things that are in his protocol. Uh, for example, a lot of these things are just lifestyle modification. Optimizing diet. So minimizing simple carbohydrates. This is huge. Um, you just uh, We talked about in the last video impaired glucose metabolism. And a lot of that is uh, with diabetes and um, insulin resistance. It can be caused by eating refined carbohydrates, inflammatory carbohydrates, simple carbohydrates that are high glycemic index that spike the blood sugar. It's a vicious cycle that when it happens over and over can, call, can lead to resistance and just keeping a, a low carbohydrate even sometimes maybe tapping into ketogenesis a little bit. So to get ke into ketosis, you have to go a little bit higher on the, the lipid content. And I would probably stay away from uh, saturated animal fats, especially if you have the APOE4 allele. Uh, Stephen Gundry, um, he's another doctor that has looked into this quite a bit really suggest staying away from cheese because cheese has a lot of saturated fat. Uh, but there's a lot of good fats too, extra virgin olive oil. There's, you know, avocados and nuts and seeds and, you know, all, dif all different ways to, to get some good fats in the diet. And if you're doing low carb with that, uh, there's a chance you might get into a little bit of keto ketogenesis which is the goal of the ketogenic diet. And he's found that low level ketogen um, ketogenesis is good. The brain likes ketones, uh, you know, as well as glucose to use for energy. Stress reduction. And some things he mentions here is like yoga and meditation, different types of music. But the goal of this is to reduce cortisol. Cortisol is a steroid hormone produced by your adrenal cortex in response to stress and it has a negative effect on the brain. It actually causes atrophy in the hippocampus, the memory center of the brain that is kind of the epicenter of Alzheimer's disease. Optimizing sleep. This is especially important if you have the APOE4 allele, which I do, and that, that gene product can help move some of the beta amyloid out of the brain and when the APO4 allele is present uh, it's not as efficient as the APOE3 and E2s so uh, you get more beta amyloid stay in the brain. What scientists have found recently is that when you sleep getting into a good deep sleep when you're in that deep sleep, your brain expands and the cerebrospinal fluid that's normally in your ventricles and uh, it actually percolates through the, the tissue of the brain and helps clear out the beta amyloid that the, the APOE protein is supposed to pick up and it's kind of like insurance for it. So if you have the APOE4 allele and you have trouble getting some of this this plaque out, then you have to rely that much more on a good deep sleep to get this uh, glymphatic system to wash through and, and clear out a lot of that beta amyloid 
and I'll show you a slide about that on the net, um, soon here in this video. Exercise four to six days a week, about 30 to 60 minutes a day. And he doesn't, you know, he said a mixture is good. It's good to have, you know, a little bit of aerobic and a little bit of resistance, um, but that it's uh, going to help protect your brain from Alzheimer's. Let's see, homocysteine, this is a blood marker. And if it's, you want to keep it below seven. And if it's high, then you really want to keep it quite a bit lower than that. But if it's high, you might have a genetic disorder of the MTF HFR gene and may have to take methylfolate as a, um, as a supplement to help reduce the homocysteine. We want to keep our CRP, that stands for C-reactive protein. We want to keep it low. We can actually measure this in the blood, and it, if it's high, that means that we just have a lot of inflammation in our body. It's not good for, it's especially a, a bad marker for cardiovascular disease because we, we want to keep our endothelium of our blood vessels, that inner lining, um, uninflamed so the more uh, inflammation uh, coursing through your blood vessels the more it's going to inflame the endothelium and then you start to get the, the cholesterol oxidized and deposit underneath the endothelium and cause a plaque but we also want to keep inflammation down for our brain an inflamed brain uh, goes towards in Alzheimer's disease uh, we want to you know this is going to go along with optimizing diet, but uh, if you're fasting, if insulin is within normal range, that's good. We want to optimize all the hormones. That includes uh, thyroid hormone, progesterone. Uh, pro, pro, we want to keep cortisone, cortisol low. Uh, our thyroid hormones, T3 and T4. So these are things that need to be addressed with your doctor and make sure that you're in the optimal range for these hormones. Reduction of um, the beta amyloid plaques. Uh, curcumin, this is the active ingredient that we see in turmeric, turmeric uh, you know, that's in, in the curry spice. Uh, the best way to take turmeric is with black pepper because it, we just don't absorb very much uh, curcumin and turmeric uh, when it's just, when it's not with papyrine or black pepper that will help uh, us to absorb it. Ashwagandha, I read the journal article associated with this. It actually helps uh, clear the beta amyloid from the brain, and it's the the way that they they found that it does this is through the liver upregulating a protein that actually actually does this it um it's a L, ldl receptor protein that can be a sink for all this amyloid beta to uh, kind of sequester or hide in and so what happens is this protein gets elevated and it helps clear it from the brain and then you see it it, they were. This was in a mouse study. They saw it higher in the peripheral blood because it was clearing it out of the brain. And so ashwagandha is a herb that you can get at GNC or somewhere like that. That uh, these both um, will help reduce the amount of beta amyloid plaque in the brain. Let's see. Those are the major ones. Of course, there's there's. It goes on down the list with different things. Uh, one that stands out is uh, resveratrol. This is what we uh, are in the red grapes. So uh, this is the one that everyone wants to drink red wine because it's healthy. The, the bad thing is you get to get enough resveratrol to really make a difference and increase your sirtuin gene expression, which is the longevity genes. This helps, with long, um, helps you to live longer when they're activated. But you'd have to drink about a thousand bottles of red wine, which I think might be counterproductive by the time you get there. Uh, some people they may have they may eat a lot of fish that's high in mercury. Some of the big predator fish like swordfish and, and 
tuna, shark, and these the uh, mercury builds up. Or they may have a lot of those amalgam fillings that are gradually kind of uh, leaching out some of the mercury into the, the bloodstream. If these get up into the brain, they can actually be a cause. Uh, another one that Dale Bredesen mentions in his book is mycotoxins from like black mold and different fungus. So make sure if you have any black mold in your house or any, you know, your work environment that it gets dealt with uh, by people um, that know how to do it. Because, um, you know, if you try to clean it off and just get those spores in the air, then you're going to end up inhaling more of it. Same thing if you have the amalgam fillings with the metal toxicity and you get them drilled out by a dentist, make sure they know how to vacuum that uh, that aluminum as it's coming out or it's going to, you know, really build up in the blood. So it's really important that if you do um, try to eliminate some of these, that they're done correctly. I wanted to drive home the point of the glymphatic system and how important it is to get good deep sleep enough sleep so that your brain can expand and allow that cerebrospinal fluid to percolate through your uh, brain and clean out the beta amyloid plaque, especially for everyone, but especially if you have the APOE4 allele. Uh, mentioned diet, diet so important. What's some ways that we, how can we eat to help uh, prevent inflammation? There's foods that are anti-inflammatory like nuts, avocados, spinach, uh, lots of different herbs like turmeric and ginger, onions and garlic, uh, you know, different fruits. So you want to stay with whole foods and stay away from processed and refined foods. And then foods that cause inflammation, gluten, this is in wheat and some grains. So uh, a lot of the proteins, the gladin proteins and gluten can, uh, our body's immune system will make antibodies against them when our, when our white blood cells make antibodies against uh, these proteins, it can cause inflammation in the body. Casein is a milk and dairy protein that uh, a lot of people make antibodies against that, that protein. Uh, meat, dairy, and eggs, these seem to be ones that uh, can cause an immune response. Processed meats, these are, these are pro-inflammatory, they cause inflammation. Uh, fried foods are full of trans fats and also uh, cause inflammation. That's basically all you get at fast foods, unless some of them are given better options now. And then we want to stay away from simple sugars. And soft drinks, we have, you know, a ton of sugar that has a high glycemic index. And what do I mean by glycemic index? Over here on the right is a chart of the glycemic index. The lower the number, the better. The lower the number just means that it slowly enters from your digestive tract into your blood, which means that you get a nice smooth release of insulin from the beta cells of the pancreas and it, it hits it on a pretty even level. Whereas if you get some of these higher numbers like white bread, baked potatoes, the white rice, um, stuff like this, then basically it just absorbs, sucks into your bloodstream really fast. Your pancreas will overshoot with insulin, which means that when it first comes in, when it shoots into your bloodstream fast, you're hyperglycemic, and that's toxic to your arteries, it's toxic to your brain. And then by, the insulin comes in, brings your blood sugar down, but it overshot to the point where it brings it down too low, where your body doesn't have enough glucose for your brain and everything, so you get hypoglycemic. And then when you get hypoglycemic, the hypothalamus, which is the, the center of the brain that tells you when you're hungry, it it encourages you to eat carbohydrates, refined carbohydrates, anything that can get in there quick. So you actually have a, uh, you get a uh, craving for the worst foods, 